Belmont Park in New York has seen many of Thoroughbred Racing's greatest female stars. From the legendary Philly Ruffian, enshrined under the flagpole in the infield here. To champions like the great Lady Secret, who swept three consecutive New York Stakes races on her way to being named Horse of the Year in 1986. The perfect Philly, personal ensign, defeated all challengers, including the boys, on the way to her Breeders' Cup victory and 1988 championship. The ill-fated but brilliant three-year-old Philly Gopher One was a regular in the New York winner's circle. And two-time Breeders' Cup champion Bayakoa pinched one of those titles on this track. Now the latest star is Sky Beauty, who has raced nine times in New York, winning all of them, including a sweep of the Grade 1 Triple Tierra Series. Sky Beauty stands out like a single rose in the three-year-old Philly division of 1993 as she moves closer to joining the other leading ladies of racing here at Belmont Park in today's Rare Perfume. Racing to the Breeders' Cup, presented by Thrifty Car Rental. Well, the fall colors have arrived, and so has championship thoroughbred racing in New York as ESPN continues its live doubleheader weekend of top stakes races from Belmont Park. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln. This afternoon, along with Dave Johnson and Tom Durkin, we continue our racing to the Breeders' Cup Series, spotlighting those Breeders' Cup hopefuls in three different divisions. Let's take a look at our triple-header Sunday race card. It starts with the Jamaica Handicap Live three-year-olds on the track right now, seven minutes to post. Then Saturday's Grade 1 Vosburg showcasing the sprinters and our feature, the Rare Perfume, featuring the top three-year-old filly, Sky Beauty. But before we look ahead, let's look back to Saturday of these grade one turf classic here's tom durkin the star of yesterday's turf classic star of cuisine going into the race was the top rated horse in america and he played the role of the odds on favorite but the drama did not unfold according to the script the scenario for the turf classic was written in the first furlong solar splendor walks away to the lead Valenzuela takes a stranglehold of Frey's, hemming would-be turf champion Star of Cozine on the hedge. These positions would not change until late on the far turn. And the pace? There aren't enough O's in slow to describe it. The quarter in 26 flat, the half in 51 and 2. The paceless procession continued with Star of Cozine totally frustrated. He was hemmed in by Frey's the whole way. Meanwhile, Apple Tree, a French-based colt, perhaps used to the races that develop in a meandering manner is running a close fourth on the outside. The mile and a half turf classic became a furlong and a half sprint. An apple tree was the best sprinter in the group. With such a bizarre pace, it's hard to condemn Star of Cozine's loss yesterday, but it was a loss nonetheless. With a victory, he would have had a leg up on the title as Turf Horse of 1993. But as it stands now, that title may very well be decided on Breeders' Cup Day. And that, of course, is what Breeders' Cup Day is all about, Tom. November 6th, Santa Anita, less than four weeks away. We'll show you some more Breeders' Cup hopefuls this afternoon. Three big races from Belmont Park in New York. Racing to the Breeders' Cup is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low prices. By the Daily Racing Form, America's Turf Authority. Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. And by the Breeders' Cup, the best 10 years in racing. As we bring you back live to Belmont Park with our Racing to the Breeders' Cup, first of our three races to show you, three minutes to post for the Jamaica. And let's set the conditions now for you of the Jamaica, named for a borough in uh, Queens in uh, New York City. And this is the 45th running. The Jamaica is great, too. $100,000 at it. A one-turn mile on this big mile-and-a-half race course. It's three-year-olds. The weather, well, 20 degrees cooler than yesterday. A beautiful day Saturday, but it is now in the 50s here. Very breezy and a fast racetrack. And to meet this field of sophomores running in the Jamaica Handicap, let's go behind the grandstands to the paddock now. And Dave Johnson. Well, it's a weekend of opposites. Yesterday, beautiful weather. A bit on the chilly side today. And on the tote board, well, in the rare perfume, you'll see a very heavy 
heavy favorite, Sky Beauty, one of the heaviest favorites in our Racing Across America series this year. But in this race, the Jamaica, it's so tough to pick uh, even the favorite. The folks here at the track can't even decide who to make the public choice. But let's see who's in the contest. We start with Virginia Rapids, who is now 5-2 to two with Eddie Maple. Cherokee Run, Herb McCauley picked up the mount. Uh, Chris Antley had been scheduled to ride, 7-2 to two the price. Living Vicariously is at 10 right now. Michielo is at 5-2. to two. The five horse is Prospector's Flag up to 21. Mighty Avante is at 19. Punchline with Andrea Seafeld is at 23. And Storm Tower with Joe Bravo at 3.5-1. And, and talking of opposites, we have a couple horses with opposite running styles. Virginia Rapids comes from far off the pace, whereas Cherokee Run runs close up to the front. And we talked to the two trainers of these horses a bit earlier about the difference in racing styles. Well, I think, you know, going a flat mile and stuff, uh, it's kind of like a sprint. It's a long sprint, and we're just going to let him bounce away from there and kind of storm towers probably is going to go for the lead. That's his style. And there might be another speed horse in there. And we can lay, you know, at, at worst, maybe a length, length and a half off the lead and just, you know, let him do his thing just rather than take him back and try to rate him. Earlier in his career, when we let him run early, he wouldn't finish any good, which most horses won't. He can't do both. And this seems to be the way that he can get the most done by being off the pace early. And there is the one, a son of River Man named Virginia Rapids, who will be flying at the finish. But let's uh, look for something a little bit higher priced. It might be tough, but today's Budweiser long shot is number two, Cherokee Run, who's been idle since the Travers, but has four wins earlier in the year, and that stamps him as a threat today. Cherokee Run is a three-year-old with early speed, which was evident as he took the Lafayette at Keeneland, the Derby Trial at Churchill Downs, and the Dwyer here at Belmont Park in June. So watch for Cherokee Run to run close up to the front, and we hope right into the winner's circle as today's Budweiser long shot. And we're looking for a Bud Long Shot trifecta. Of course, we gave you a lend in the Super Derby a week ago Saturday at $42. Apple Tree for $11.40 and yesterday's Turf Classic. Stakes record, 133-3 and three in this uh, uh, running of the Jamaica. And Bell's Goal holds the, uh, well, the Williamstown holds the track record, 132-3. and three. There you see the starting gate on the backside. One turn mile for the Jamaica handicap and for the call. We'll go to the top of the stands and Tom Durkin. Indeed, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, in my announcer's booth here, nice and cozy, it is, as you mentioned, a cold afternoon, and I can't resist saying that this will be a cool running of the Jamaica Handicap. 45th running as it is, and the hot pace, uh, should it develop, will probably be between Storm Tower and Cherokee Run. Misielo, one of the uh, contenders here, certainly will be right about in the middle of it all, making his move on the far turn, and the last to move will be Virginia Rapids. Waiting for Punchline and Storm Tower. There is Storm Tower and uh, Joe Bravo, and there is Andrea Seafeld aboard Punchline. Would be uh, one of the biggest uh, victories in uh, her career, should Punchline win today. A Maryland-based uh, horse that uh, is no stranger, actually, to Belmont. He's had three starts here. Storm Tower moves into post eight. They're in the gate. Ready for the start of the uh, Jamaica. And they're off. Storm Tower breaks alertly on the outside, going right after the early lead. Cherokee Run was off a step slowly, but he's rushing up to engage Storm Tower early. And Prospector's Flag runs third. Punchline moving into third now on the outside. Prospector's Flag is back to fourth. Misielo's in mid-pack, fifth about five lengths from the lead. Living vicariously is sixth. Then Mighty Avante is seventh in the early going. Virginia Rapids is content where he is right now. Trailing the field, he's about ten lengths from the pacemakers. The opening quarter in 23 and 1. Storm Tower fending off Cherokee Run in the early going. And Punchline is right there, keeping touch in third. Prospector's Flags being pushed along to stay within striking range for the break of five. Me Seattle is running fifth. He's got about nine lengths to make up. Then it's living vicariously, followed by Mighty Avante. And Virginia Rapids is still about 15 from the front. The half in 45 and four fifth seconds down. They're three furlongs from the line. Cherokee Run. Punch Punchline is revving up on the outside. It's Cherokee Run and Punchline dueling as they come to the top of the stretch. Storm Tower retreats. Prospector's flag is there. Me Cielo gathering momentum. Living by Carisley switched to the outside. And now Virginia Rapids is coming on late. Six lengths from the lead. Cherokee Run. Herb McCauley all over him. Me Cielo rushing up. And Me Cielo takes the lead inside the eighth pole. Prospector's flag. Cherokee Run is back. 
back in third. They're coming down to the line. And Me Cielo wins going away by three widening lengths. Prospector's flag second, then Cherokee run. And Me Cielo, Mike Smith, unbeatable here at Belmont. He won two stakes races yesterday. He wins with Me Cielo here, and his big horse, Sky Beauty, is still in the barn. The time, 135 and 1. Me Cielo, owned by uh, Tom Carey, is a three year old son of Conquistador uh, Cielo, and has been in very Peter Vestal train and has been a very consistent horse. In the Jerome, a grade one event in his last start, he was third, but beaten just a half a length, won the King's Bishop by over two and a quarter lengths. And Miss Yellow picks up a victory here in the grade two to make a handicap. Dave, bring him home. <laughs> and as they turn for home, the Bud Long shot on the inside in the blue and white colors, and McCauley looks over his shoulder and saw that they were gaining on him, but he still looks strong here, but not strong enough to withstand the challenge of Michielo. And Mike Smith has that winning habit and here comes um, the four horse Michielo is just going to blow by and win easily going away as Tom called it with the five horse prospector's flag finishing second a big victory again what a weekend for Mike Smith tenth trip to the post for Michielo makes it a winning one here this afternoon as you see him hit the wire first in the 45th running of the Jamaica you look at the winner's circle for the Jamaica Handicap. It's Mike Smith's winner's circle this weekend, as it has been most of this meet, the trainer. Tom Carey in the green coat, you just caught a glimpse of the man from Wichita, Kansas. I got a quick word with him. Tom said he doubted they'd go on to the Breeders' Cup. He likes keeping his horse at about a mile here. Mies Yellow, though, unofficially winning the Jamaica Handicap, 135 and 20. Prospector's flag was second. Our Bud Longshot running third. Now for the replay, back to Tom Durkin. Let's pick it up at the top of the stretch near the back of the pack toward the inside horse with the red cap is living vicariously and uh, in between horses there is uh, Virginia Rapids and to their outside is Mighty Avanti. You'll see living vicariously come off the rail. He'll float Virginia Rapids wide right in the midst of Virginia Rapids best part of his race. Up front in the meantime Cherokee run who hasn't run a good race uh, since uh, July will begin to weaken and me Cielo who finished 14th in the Kentucky Derby has found a niche here going six seven and eight furlongs here he's a pretty good sprinter and indeed a good miler but not really a lot of opportunities for milers on this side of the water but nonetheless the victor here with Mike Smith who is on a roll Chris with the happy connections of me Cielo I'm saying Esther Peter Vastro the trainer and Tom Carey the owner of the man in the green coat we mentioned earlier Peter ever since the Kentucky Derby he ran 14th we saw him kind of bouncing around this spring he really has been a very consistent racehorse Yes, he's become very consistent for us. Uh, the Derby had kind of a rough trip and was inside of horses, and we learned uh, he really didn't want to go that far. A uh, mile is his best distance, and he likes to run from outside. And if he can get to the outside, which he could not in the Jerome, uh, he's a very powerful finisher. Tom, you're quite a sportsman. We've seen you travel all over the country with this horse. Will you go as far as California, though, for the Breeders' Cup? Well, maybe not this year, but uh, we'll be running the horse next year for sure. Tom Carey and Peter Vestal, and they really have something to smile about today. That's me, CLO wins. Well, horsemen's groups across the country have put together another group to help this sports, the Horsemen's Media Relations, and the man who's going to be heading all of it is Barry Weisbord, the fellow who gave us the American Championship Racing Series. We asked Barry to tell us more about this new organization. Chris, we're still in actually the process of being formally organized, but we're working with five states horsemen's groups, of which uh, the New York HPBA and its president, Al Freed, have been very instrumental in our startup, to make a declaration of commitment to a very simple mandate, to try to make racing a more popular sport for consumers, while at the same time trying to improve the uh, economic plight of our owners. Barry, why have the horsemen taken on this responsibility at this time? Well, as you know, we've been uh, losing fans in the marketplace, but also uh, the gap between purses and the cost of maintenance for our horses has just widened to the point now that owners are currently losing over a billion dollars a year. And I think it's high time that owners take on more responsibility for their own future. Therefore, they're committing some economic resources to try to search for solutions. Barry Weisbord, the new president of the Horsemen's Marketing and Media. We wish them good luck. And now talk about uh, some benefits of thoroughbred racing. Look at these prices for you. Meets Yellow returns 7, 4, 40, and 320. And winning the Jamaicas, we make it official for you. Prospectors flag second. Cherokee run third. A 4-5 exacta gives you nice $111.40. 
Well, the Breeders' Cup certainly has given us some of the great moments in racing, and in 1988 at Churchill Downs, it gave us a perfect moment. New York Racing Association flag in the infield blowing briskly here at Belmont Park, our site of our triple header of racing this afternoon for you. And in case you miss any of the action from Belmont Park or across the nation this weekend, we'll wrap it all up for you on Monday at 6 o'clock Eastern, the daily racing form, Thoroughbred Digest. Well, we have uh, just shown you that Jamaica still to come. Don't forget the grade one Vosburg for the Sprinters. That was run here on Saturday. And then our next live race, the rare perfume for the three-year-old Phillies. Right now, though, another big story in racing has been developing here. And Dave Johnson has the tales on that. Well, as you walk through the betting ring, there are several main topics of conversation. The upcoming Breeders' Cup, uh, Julie Crone's speedy recovery from that nasty spill up at Saratoga, David Letterman's top ten ways to lose a race, and shoes. Oh, not for humans. We're talking for racehorses. Specifically, they're called turndowns. They are modified versions of regular flat hind shoes on which the ends have been turned down to as much as a 90 degree angle. They were used in harness racing as far back as 25 years ago. And it's been said that thoroughbred trainer Peter Ferriola reinvented them here some 10 years back. In the last couple of years, several successful trainers with both big and small stables have added turndowns to their equipment, and many were using them on every horse in every race, regardless of track condition. But they will no longer be permitted in New York. This past Wednesday, the New York Racing Association banned the use of turndowns at our racetracks. The major concerns was safety to our jockeys, safety to our horses. Another main concern was safety to our racetracks. Past September 17th, we lost a day of racing. The concern was maybe the use of turndowns had destroyed some of our base to our racetrack. Trainer reaction has varied from Alan Jerkins calling it baloney to other conditioners who praised the decision. For instance, Wallenda has worn turndowns twice when he won the Pennsylvania Derby and when he won last week's Super Derby. What does his trainer think? I don't really think they... They might have played a little bit of a part, but I, I don't put a great deal of emphasis on, on the shoes. And, um, you know, what's good for one is good for the other. I, I kind of was for it. I think for safety purposes, concerning the riders and the horses, uh, you know, if a horse ever fell and one stepped on another, those things, you know, could really cut somebody open. So I think that it's a good idea that they outlaw them. But the tough job will be for the players, for the handicappers who try and pick winners with these horses coming back without turndowns on different surfaces at different racetracks. Chris? Thank you, Dave. By the way, as yet no decision from Santa Anita, California Racing about turndowns and their possibility for the November 6th Breeders' Cup. And again, Breeders' Cup is about crowning champions. In 1986, in the Breeders' Cup distaff, Lady Secret went for all of it. <laughs> on a five-and-a-half length lead. And here is a brilliant champion, Lady Secret, another flawless performance. From the paddock, a look back at the grandstands here at Belmont Park is our Race in the Breeders' Cup Series. Uh, our next live race for you coming up at 4.15. The star belongs to that May. Challenge Jerkins just walked through the shot there, and there is the brilliant three-year-old filly, Sky Beauty, trying for her fourth consecutive grade one victory. But before that, we have tape coverage of the grade one Vosburg for you. $200,000 in this person. The race runs Saturday at seven furlongs for Thoroughbreds three and up. They first started giving an Eclipse Award in 1971 to sprinters, and eight champions have come out of the Vosburg. Let's take a look at this year's field. Lion Cavern, take me out at 7-2, the entry. Bird on the wire, held at 5-2 with the red-hot Mike Smith riding. Then it's Ibero at 2-1, coming in from California. Jose Santos has the ride of the Ron McAnally trainee. Loach at 24, and the 7-5 favorite from Canada, Roger Atfield's barn. Ali Deed with Craig Perrette. Here's the call of Saturday's Vosburg with Tom Durkin. 
They're in the gate. And they're off. Allie Dean breaks sharply today, and so does Ibero and Loach. And Loach, hard ridden and intent on the lead, and gets there three quarters of a length. Allie Dean just off his flank, now running second. Take me out up close third. Ibero has dropped back to fourth. He's now six lengths from the lead. Lion Caverns to his outside, and Bird on the wire is loping along at the back of the pack as Loach leads the way, and he rattles off a quarter in 22 and 2 with Allie Dean pursuing and breathing down his neck now. Take me out is up close to this brisk pace running third. Four lengths back to Lion Cavern and Ibero. And now Bird on the wire begins to roll. Moving midway round the far turn. Ali Deed emerges with the lead on the outside. Take me out. Bird on the wire with the breathtaking rush on the turn has now moved up to be third. And here's Ibero coming with his run on the rail. And Lion Cavern is in behind a wall of horses. But he's got a seam to run through. And five turn for home together with Bird on the wire swooping to the lead on the outside and it's Bird on the wire in front as they come to the final furlong Lion Cavern is robbed take me out as Wander to the outside Ibero has flattened out for it and Bird on the wire under Mike Smith and a rousing ride here will go on to win it and he did it with a spectacular move on the turn Bird on the wire by three take me out second close for third California, here we come. No doubt about it. Who the best spinner is in the East? Bird on the wire. His third straight win. He won the Tom Fool, the Forgo, and the Vosburg. And there are the official results from Saturday. Right after the race, Dave Johnson had a chance to talk to Bird on the Wire trainer Phil Serpy. Asked him about the conversion of this route horse to a top sprinter. So Bird on the Wire was in the Meadowlands Cup running distance last year. Phil Serpy, did you decide to make him into a sprinter? Well, not exactly at first, Dave, but um, uh, after trying him back at uh, route distances several times and him being a little inconsistent and his game efforts at seven furlongs, we think he just fits the package completely now. He was really game in the Vosburg, wasn't he? Let's watch. Big wide move and a big horse. He sure did. Um, he really matches his race at the Tom Fool here um, and, and also exactly the same kind of style as the forego handicap at Saratoga. And he just exploded in a turn. Any worry there uh, and subsequently when the inquiry sign went up? Well, it looked like a combination of him, his momentum carrying him in through the turn and maybe take me out just drifting just a little bit out. But uh, it looked like there was plenty of room for me. Easy or hard horse to train? No, not really. Um, he, he's a real good horse to train. He's easy on himself, and my staff just does a great job with him, and we're just ticked. Are you going to the Breeders' Cup? We are going. And how do you feel about those fast fractions they set out there at Santa Anita? Well, I think the fast fractions could only help him. A quick pace could only help a horse like him coming from behind, and uh, we, we got to try it. What a surprise. There's Mike Smith again and again in the winner's circle. You saw him, the Turf Classic winner's circle. Here he is again in Saturday's Vosburg and the presentation to the owners, Robert Coffin and Jimmy Eslin with uh, Jerry Lawrence, the New York Racing Association Executive Vice President. And they're in the paddock. Alan Jerkins, the trainer, Mike Smith, the jockey, and Georgia Hoffman's the owner of the filly everybody's talking about in racing, the three-year-old Sky Beauty. You know, the Vosburg has been such an impact on the Breeders' Cup. In fact, five of the last nine runnings of the Breeders' Cup, the favorite in the sprint has come out of the Vosburg and two winners. And I'd say that uh, certainly tradition is going to continue very nicely with Bird on the Wire. Speaking of traditions, the Breeders' Cup is used to making new stars, and we had one in 1991. And there goes the European star, Rossi and he's coming with a menacing rush to Bertrando, and now the stage is set as they move toward the top of the stretch, and Arazi runs right by him, down to the finish here, here indeed is a superstar, absolutely sensational. Live at Belmont Park, about 10 minutes away from race 7 here, it's the Rare Perfume with the three-year-old fillies in the spotlight now, and you might see them on the track there, and the shadow completely across the racetrack here at Belmont Park. Let's take a look now at the conditions of racing. Very similar to uh, the Jamaica, grade 2, $100,000 out of one mile. The main difference is, of course, it is the three-year-old fillies. And, of course, the leader of the division, Sky Beauty, is the one everybody's talking about. Dave Johnson now has a look at those that are her challengers today. We talked about shoes earlier, the turndowns. You know that Alan Jerkins was against the band. 
And Sky Beauty wore turndowns in her last race at Saratoga, but I don't think she needs them. She could beat this field this afternoon barefoot. Not much competition. None of her competitors have won a graded event this year. Let's see how they'll line up. We've had one scratch. That was uh, Kuru Klata. A Fedetta, who's very highly regarded in the Billy Mott Barn, is the two horse with Craig Perrette, and right now at uh, 10 to 1. Make that 6 to 1. Then we have uh, True Affair and uh, Four All Seasons. Joe Bravo, by the way, with uh, True Affair won four last night at the Meadowlands. Mike Smith going for his fourth winner of the afternoon with the favorite Sky Beauty, who is now 1 to 5. Inner Glory and Ann Deer completes the field. With me now is Sky Beauty's rider, Mike Smith. Hey, which is more fun, looking back at yesterday when you won the Turf Classic in the Vosburgh or looking ahead to the Breeders' Cup where you have a full plate? <laughs> Actually, kind of right now looking back because I've already uh, accomplished that. Uh, but now that, I, now that you mentioned it, just looking forward right now, uh, I have a lot of a lot of great horses going into the Breeders' Cup, so it's, it's really setting up great for me. I mean, that could be the day of your career. Oh, wouldn't it be something to get a, you know, a three-bagger or four-bagger that day? <laughs> it, it sure would. <laughs> and you've got the power, too. Hey, let's refocus, though, on uh, the business at hand today. And Sky Beauty have won four straight grade ones with her, but uh, you were working pretty hard going a mile and a quarter in the Alabama. Yes, I was last time. Uh, uh, last time I rode her, I, I had to really, really get after her. Uh, we don't feel that she was at her best uh, going into the race, actually. She wasn't doing as well. She wasn't eating much. She kind of lost a little weight. And, and it kind of backed off on her training, but now she's really, really doing well, so hopefully she'll prevail again. And the distance today should suit a little better. So going back to a mile, she can she uh, runs a mile great, uh, which I believe she runs any, any distance great. Uh, the ones that she's run over but in a mile she's really really strong so she should she should do her thing today i hope she does anyway hey how about this winter we're not going to see you at the aqueduct meet no we're going to florida this winter uh my agent decided i always let my agent decide uh, where we should go and uh, a lot more of our business is going there this year and and the purse structure is a lot better there this year so we're going to give it a try you might try and pick up a horse for the kentucky derby certainly uh which uh, i picked up a pretty good one staying here this winter though in, in prairie bayou you know but uh, you're better three-year-olds uh, usually are there so we're hoping hoping that Anyway. Okay, best of luck, Mike. Thank you. I think we'll follow Mike to Florida. And there is Mike on Sky Beauty. There you notice he's in the colors of Georgia Hoffman now. That's the gold and the blue diamonds. The fans talking about Sky Beauty. Well, so are the turf riders up in the warm press box. That's where Tom Durkin is. Here with Dave Litvin of the Daily Racing Forum, who toils at a typewriter just a few spaces down. Dave, uh, an easy question to begin with. Who's going to win today? Well, Alan Jerkins is famous for picking his spots, and he's found a nice one for Sky Beauty. I think she's 1-5 to five or 1-9 to nine in this field, and she'll probably win by five easy lengths. All right, now the question's getting tougher. Uh, what is she going to have to do for year-end honors other than just three-year-old filly of the year? I think at this point she'd have to go into the Classic and win it, or at least run a strong second in the race. If you look at history, uh, the last two horses of the year were, that were fillies were all along in Lady Secret. All along beat males in three countries four times. Lady Secret won the Whitney, as well as the Distaff. Uh, even Personal Ensign won the Whitney and then retired undefeated after the Distaff, and she didn't get Horse of the Year. So I think she has to prove herself against males. How does she compare with some of those fillies you just mentioned? I think right now if she was in a race with all of them, she'd probably be the longest shot on the board. Uh, uh, she's dominated the three-year-old fillies this year, but she hasn't really broken any stopwatches, perhaps with the exception of the acorn where she earned a buyer figure of 107. Uh, her time in the Alabama was uh, really quite mediocre. Dave Lippin was right on, though, when he talked about Sky Beauty's odds. She is currently at 1-5, to five, the dominant three-year-old filly in her division. There you see the starting gate set. It's a one-turn mile here at Belmont. The very first Breeders' Cup was 1984, Hollywood Park, and let's find the first juvenile champion. <laughs> She is the center of attention at Belmont Park this afternoon and in thoroughbred racing for the three-year-old division. As you're looking at Sky Beauty under the colors of Georgia Huffman and rider Mike Smith. Let's give you the current odds here in this short field. You saw the scratch of the one. Fidetta at 9-2. to two, True Affair 9. Everything else is big prices except, of course, Sky Beauty that now is 2-5. to five. Well, our Hall of Fame trainer, Alan Jerkins, has been training thoroughbred since 1950. He's never had a better one than his three-year-old filly, Sky Beauty, in terms of a Philly. He was a little concerned, though. She has not run since the Alabama in mid-August, and we talked to Alan about his concern of her holding her weight. 
She's been eating well lately. She didn't eat too well before the Alabama, and I was pretty worried about her, but she's doing much better about the eating now, and she's training very well. So if she runs a big race on Sunday, I think she'll be going out to the Reader's Cup. She's put on weight since the Alabama, and I think if she run, if she would run next year, she would be a, a better, better you know, really good, strong racehorse. Well, she says a big, strong racehorse, and Dave, I guess that's why they have her with 124 pounds. She's carrying 12 more than the rest, and I thought, interesting, she carries four more pounds than any of the three-year-old Colts did in the Jamaica. <laughs> but uh, I think most of the people think that she can certainly carry that weight, and she is two to five right now. But one big question mark in the field, Chris, is Fedetta, number two, started at 10 to one, is now five to one, and this horse has been well regarded from the start, making only one appearance as a two-year-old, and that was a four-length victory at Aqueduct as the two-to-one second choice. And then she's been favored in all three of her starts this year, twice at Saratoga and once at Belmont. And uh, she's won three out of four lifetimes. So I guess Billy Mott just wants to find out how good she is. And Craig Perrette is aboard there in the purple and white. This is the 15th running of the Rare Perfume. The fastest one was Banner Gale in 1981 at 133 and 3. And of course, Williamstown holds that one mile track record, as he told you earlier, here at Belmont. Certainly, Sky Beauty, though, with more to lose than anyone else, Dave. And you add the 12 pound she has to carry. She has not run since mid August. Uh, a little bit about her weight, but uh, so she does look the unbeatable part here. And that always scares you. And she has now gone back down to 1 to 5 as uh, Bobby Duncan leads her into the starting game. Tom Durkin. Let's get ready for the call of the rare perfume. How much do they like Sky Beauty? Somebody likes her an awful lot. Within the last three minutes, $150,000 to show has been put on Sky Beauty. She's got over $200,000 to show on her. They're in the gate. Sky Beauty in standing well. And they're off. And on the outside, and Deer breaks first, and there goes four all seasons. And up close to them is favored Sky Beauty, who settles in third and behind the front runner, who will be four all seasons there by length. And and Deer is running second. Mike Smith has Sky Beauty up close to the pace, running third. And True Affair toward the inside is in hand, running fourth. A length and a half back to In Her Glory, running in fifth. And a big gap back to Fedetta, who lags behind the rest. Four all seasons moving comfortably on the lead. Sky Beauty is content and comfortable to run second through an opening quarter of 23 and 1. And here, a laid back third. Toward the inside, True Affair is right there, just off the lead fourth. She's only three lengths from the lead now. And then in her glory is second to last, still well behind this Fedetta with a half mile to run. The half went in 46 and 1 fifth seconds. Four all seasons is still the leader. Smith has yet to make a move with Sky Beauty. There he goes now, asking Sky Beauty for a bit more run and collars for all seasons with three furlongs to go. And here is put to a drive. Now, third on the outside. Then down on the inside, True Affair runs along in fourth. In her glory, still only three from the lead. And Fedetta has made up considerable ground. They're turning for home. And for all seasons has the lead. And now Sky Beauty is set down for the drive. And here comes And Ears right there on the outside. They're in mid-stretch. And now Mike Smith exhorts Sky Beauty to the lead. It's Sky Beauty in front of the 16th pole. And for all seasons, And Ears. Fedetta is coming close, but coming late. Here's the line. And Sky Beauty, the Bay Beauty, does it again, winning by two. And it's close for second between Fedetta and For All Seasons. And the time here was one minute, 35 and three-fifths seconds. Mike Smith, the picture of confidence, turning for home with Sky Beauty. At the 3 16th pole, he asked this one for more run, and he got it. She never wins by much, but she almost always wins. That, her seventh grade one victory of uh, her career. And what a brilliant career it is. The one to five favorite. And uh, anyway, she kept people from jumping off bridges here, Dave, after a big show bet, as we told you about that. Let's take a look at Sky Beauty. And she worked for this victory, Dave. And the horse who finished second for that is not in the picture at this point. She's in the picture for the place, though. Mike Smith with a right-handed whip. Now he goes to a hand ride. And uh, Jose Santos, who had won the, the rare pursuit, three out of the last four years with four all seasons on the inside dropping back. Fedetta coming like a freight train on the outside. Looks like Fedetta will get the play spot, but it's still the victory of Sky Beauty. 
And there she is, the nation's top-ranked three-year-old filly, destined to be the champion of this year, owned by Georgia Hoffman and trained by the great Hall of Famer, Alan Jerkins, ridden by who else? <laughs> Mike Smith. The three-year-old champion to be, Sky Beauty, and she is something special. She wins her seventh grade one, her fourth grade one victory in a row. With her win this afternoon, Mike Smith unsaddles Sky Beauty. Today, of course, our grade two event for her, and she really, just no matter what the grade is, she keeps winning, and she does it very impressively. Well, this one was a sure thing. No sure thing coming up next on ESPN, senior golf action. It is the final round of the Transamerica from Napa, California. Three currently tied at nine under par. Bob Charles, the defending champion of the event, and seven are within one stroke. Tom Durkin, let's look at Sky Beauty. Turning for home for all seasons uh, has the lead here as they come to the top of the stretch. Sky Beauty's been within a length or two of a fairly uh, honest pace. Collaring for all seasons at the top of the stretch. There's Sky Beauty in between horses. Uh, Mike Smith uh, still has not cocked his whip yet. He's asking Sky Beauty for just a bit more run. Uh, handwriting at this point, just a little tap or two on the rump. He will show the whip to her. Now you can kind of tell actually how easy she won. She doesn't have her ears pinned back like many horses do when they're really, really aggressive. She's got her ears kind of twitching, just taking in all of the sights here as she comes down to the line. Ears twitching and all. This Bay Beauty does it again. Chris? Sky Beauty, and we'll be back to make things official. Hopefully get a word also to talk about some of the uh, possibilities of the Breeders' Cup. Alan Jerkins said it's no sure thing. He's a little concerned about how she'll come out of this race before he makes any decision about going on to the Breeders' Cup. But Dave Johnson's ready to ask him that question right now. <laughs> She's something else, isn't she, Alan? She is, she is great. No question about that. And Mike, uh, have you ever ridden a horse like this? Uh, no, she's incredible. She really is. She's, she's genuine as can be, I tell you that. Shh, let's look at it. And Alan, you might be watching here not only the three-year-old, three-year-old filly of the year, but this, this she could easily be horse of the year. Well, it's tough. The next one's going to be really tough, that's for sure. Okay. Is the next one the Breeders' Cup? Well, she wants to go. So what Lola wants. She wants to go, doesn't she? Yeah. What well, Lola wants, Lola gets, he said. <laughs> and Mike, uh, she won a victory again today. Like, like she said, uh, what Lola wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to you, Chris. <laughs> Well, Alan Jerkins is so conservative. He has run only one horse in the entire history of the Breeders' Cup. That was at Aqueduct in 1985 when a juvenile filly he had, Sweet Account, ran ninth. He didn't seem terribly excited about Breeders' Cup possibilities, but that's the way Mr. Jerkins is. Everybody else is excited, though, about Sky Beauty. at Belmont Park, racing to the Breeders' Cup. That's just what we've done this afternoon, bringing you three races, one from Saturday, two live here this afternoon. Let's give you the official prices now. For our coverage of the rare perfume, Sky Beauty, the great champion, 135.76 the time for the mile. There you see the prices on one to five. Fidetta with a late run, finishing second in the photo there, and third for all seasons. Full order now for the rest of the Phillies. We'll pick it up with Ann Deer, fourth in her glory, was fifth. True Affair, sixth. Dave Johnson has another look at Sky Beauty. And you know, when I was standing here with uh, jockey Mike Smith and trainer uh, Alan Jerkins, you know what they were talking about? They were talking about the second horse, Padata. And Mike Smith said, boy, she beat uh, some really nice mares last out. And I said, who are you talking about? He says, the second horse. Isn't it funny? They're always looking over their shoulder. But uh, let's take a look at this brilliant victory of Sky Beauty this afternoon. And Fedetta, who's last at this point. Maybe a note for your handicapping notebook there. In the yellow cap and just moving to the front past four all seasons in the red cap at the rail is uh, Sky Beauty, who was carrying top weight of 124 pounds. And I would imagine that Billy Mott, the trainer, and uh, Craig Perrette, the jockey, found out a lot about their filly, Fedetta, who carried 112 and isn't even in your picture at this point. But Sky Beauty roars to victory. Fedetta roars up to finish second. One more thing, if you're not at the track, you won't find out if Mike Smith makes it five this afternoon, but check the results when you're hot, you're hot. This lovely lady standing next to me is Georgia Hoffman. She is the very happy owner of Sky Beauty. She just kept saying, she's the best, she's the best. Georgia, we all want to know your plans, though. Are you going on to the Breeders' Cup to prove she's the best? I hope to. Uh, and, of course, it's up to Mr. Jurgens what he thinks she can do. But we, we plan to go. 
I, I have the feeling you want to go and prove to everybody she's the best. I think she is. <laughs> That's kind of making a bad statement, but I think she's a great filly. Uh, she has great breeding, too, to go along with it. Yes, she does. She's the granddaughter of Gold Beauty that, that had all these great horses. A day sure, for sure. one. Well, I know Alan Jerkins means a lot to you, and what a great condition, what a great job he's done with this filly. Yes, he has. He's just, he's taken the greatest care of her and, and trained her very, very well, in, in her way. She's Georgia Hoffman just may be getting Alan Jerkins on a plane heading to California for Breeders' Cup Day, November 6th. That's, Georgia, see you in California. That's where we're going. All right. And next for us, we'll be heading to New Jersey, East Rutherford, New Jersey, for our coverage Friday night of the Grade 1 Meadowlands Cup. Hope you'll join us live at 11. 11 o'clock Eastern. And the man of the weekend, no doubt about it, is Mike Smith. He's the nation's leading money-earning rider. And all he did was win both of our grade ones and both of our grade twos. We showed you on this weekend of racing from Belmont Park in New York. Mike Smith, what a rider and what a weekend. Hope you've enjoyed our Racing to the Breeders' Cup coverage this weekend from Belmont Park, New York. Brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low prices. By Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. By Keeneland, source of the classic horse. The Thoroughbred Racing Associations, assuring the highest racing standards. Ground transportation provided by Thrifty Car Rental. For reservations at over 700 locations worldwide, call Thrifty at 1-800-4-CARS. Charts and statistics courtesy of the Daily Racing Forum, America's Turf Authority. Racing to the Breeders' Cup is an ESPN production in association with Winner Communications. What a day, triple header throwback racing action. First, in the Vosberg and our tape coverage of the grade one race from Saturday. Bird on the wire, wins here and goes on, I'm sure, to the Breeders' Cup sprint. Then, the boys in the Jamaica, Nice Yellow and the colors of Tom Carey, wins under rider Mike Smith to prove the best of the three-year-olds on this day at Belmont Park. And of course, she is the queen of the American turf, the three-year-old Sky Beauty, her fifth straight stakes victory.